I'm really interested in your characterization of the existence of God and the beginning of the universe as a scientific question. And I wanted to probe this a little bit. Yes, because please. I, I had a I had a thought that was inspired by something that C.S. Lewis had said on the relationship between science and religion. And I have this image in my head of uh, people who are, who are really optimistic about the progress of science and the scientific method. And they say something like, look, you know, Years ago, we used to say so much was down to God. We used to not know why the why the planets orbited the sun, and we said it was because angels was pushing them. We used to not know why there was so much complexity in biological life, and we said that God did it. But look how we're discovering these laws. We're discovering the law of natural selection. We're discovering the laws of gravity. You know, and there seems to be this trajectory such that when we say, "Well, where did it all come from in the first place?" One day we'll get there. Now, I don't know if you agree with that as a, as an optimistic trajectory for for the scientific method. Clearly, there's a trajectory, and uh, and, and the, I would put it that uh, the big problem of design, as William Paley put it, was life. He said something like, "The physical world is not the best place in which to to um, demonstrate the existence of the, of, the, of the Creator because it's too simple." Hmm. And I think he was right. And um, he he was also right when he said that the the really big problem for religion is 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 life. And yes. his, both him and his his whole book is based upon looking at design in the in the living world. Darwin solved that. So Darwin solved the big one. And um, we have some re remaining problems. The the arc is still hasn't really reached its end. We still have some problems with the origin of the laws of physics, the origin of the universe. But I think that the fact that Darwin solved the big one should gives us give us confidence. Uh, the, that was the really difficult one. The 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 amazing apparent design in the living world. I mean, that is such an such an a staggeringly overwhelming impression of, of design. There's no question about that. And that was the one that Darwin solved. Well, Darwin solves the problem of complexity within living organisms, but I think it might be a step too far to say he solved the problem of life. Because of course, one of the questions that we have to throw into that bundle of things yet to explain, the origin of the, the origin of physics, of, yes. the origin of life. Origin and of life. Well, that's not part of Darwinism, of course. That, right. That's a separate question, and Darwin acknowledged that. And that, that is an unsolved problem. It may never be solved in the sense that we may never actually know what the answer is. I think the best we can probably hope for is a model which is so elegant hmm. that we may say, well, that's, that's so elegant, it's got to be true. I mean, it, it would, but that's very, a bit different from having direct, direct evidence. At present, we don't really have that. Um, we have various possible ideas, some of them more plausible than others. And I think we know the kind of question we're trying to answer. We're trying to answer how did the first self-replicating entity come into existence? And that's a big yes. question. It only had to happen once, um, unlike, the, unlike the rest of evolution, which where it happened over and over and over again. The same thing happened over and over again, all over the world, different continents, different species, different kinds of animal and plant, and so on. Um, the origin of life could have been a very, very improbable event because it only had to happen once. Uh, and therefore, we are potentially allowed to postulate something very unlikely, something very implausible. I find that quite an interesting point, actually, that... that um, yes. That... that I mean, if you take it to an extreme, so suppose we are the only planet in the universe which has life, which is, we can't rule that out. I think it's highly unlikely, but we can't rule it out. If that's true, then that means that the origin of life on this planet was a, a, a stupendously improbable event. Mm. And therefore, when chemists try to postulate a possible scenario for the origin of life, they're not looking for a plausible argument. They're looking for a very implausible <laughs> argument. That's fascinating, yeah. Now, I don't believe that because I think that probably it was a, a, not that improbable an, an sure. event. And therefore, and therefore, the likelihood is that there's lots of life all over the universe. Uh, but um, even to say, let's say, a, a, a million different life forms all over the universe, since the number of 
possible places where there could be life is so large. Yes. A million is actually a very small number. That's fascinating. I mean, there are, there are many things in the universe that, that have a tiny, tiny chance of happening, but could. Like, uh, you know, I've... I've I've heard physicists say that because atoms are just vibrating and, and they're all sort of vibrating against each other and hence we get stillness. There's a, there's a very small, uh, unimaginably small possibility, but a real one that this this glass could just sort of spontaneously move across yeah, the table right, if all yes. of the atoms yes. you know, happen to vibrate yeah. in that direction. Yes. Now, the universe, like you say, I mean, everybody talks about the universe being vast. I read, I think, this morning that if the sun were the size of a white blood cell, then the Milky Way would be the size of the continental United States. Yeah, now, you, terrifying. We might need to fact check yes. that exact example, yes. but it's un, and that's just the Milky Way. And yes. when you consider that, uh, okay, oh, are you saying that you know, in, in a materialistic universe, life can just sort of pop into existence? Well, I understand the suspicion that that might be something unimaginably uh, unlikely, but we're in an unimaginable universe. Yes. So that's yes. a, that's a wonderful way of thinking. Yes. I, about I wouldn't want to resort to that right, i think yeah. we don't we don't need to um by the way the the possibility of the glass moving across the table it, it's there but i once asked a physicist what the likely what the probability is and he said if you started writing zeros at the at the origin of the universe you'd still be writing zeros at this um, right so um we probably don't have to go that far yes. in, in in our we could have a sort of spectrum of improbabilities and and i can already see uh, you know uh, the a theist cutting this up and saying yeah. atheists admit that exactly. their that their exactly. worldview so we don't, we don't want to is unimaginably there. unlikely. We don't, we don't want to go there. I mean, my my my, my gut feelings. Uh, Carl Sagan said, "Well, I try not to think with my gut, but if if I'm forced, my my gut feeling would be that there there are, there is lots of life around the universe, but still, it could be so rare that." Um, we don't uh, have much chance of ever meeting any of these other life Sure. Sure. Um, uh, that's fascinating. But let's push the, the question even further back still, because I wanted to ask you, you, you mentioned about the, the origin of the laws of physics, for example. Yes. Now, the story that we tell is something like, we discover all of these laws, and so this gives us an idea that science is moving in a direction, and that eventually we, we, we may well discover the origin of the laws themselves. But th that seems to me like a separate question. And the way I want to explain this is by sort of borrowing and adapting, uh, as I say, something C.S. Lewis said. Um, Lewis talks about the relationship between Hamlet and Shakespeare a fair bit, or the character in a book and, and his author. I mean, I, I can ask, you know, why did... Uh, why did Sherlock Holmes move into Baker Street? And you can either say, well, it's because, uh, you know, he, he was looking for a roommate or, or something like that. Or you could say, because Arthur Conan Doyle wanted him to. And both of those seem to be true in a different resolution of thought. Now, what I'm imagining here is us discovering Hamlet by Shakespeare on the table in front of us. And immediately, crudely, you look at it and say, well, that must have been designed. You know, that must have an author. And... I don't just do the William Paley thing, you know, it's complex. What I say is, well, look, Professor Dawkins, I, I've, I've done some research onto this little book and I've discovered that it obeys certain laws. You know, I, I've noticed that at the end of certain sentences, there are these little dots. And if there's a big dot, it, used, it usually means that it's the end of a sentence. And there are two different kinds of each letter. There's a big A and a little A. And if it's the beginning of a sentence, it's a new one. Also, we've discovered this thing called iambic pentameter. You know, it, it seems that the way these sentences are constructed seem to follow this law, this law of literacy. And I said to you, now, where did this book come from? And you say, I still think there was an author of this book. I still think someone created it. And I said, yeah, but look at all the progress that we've made just by describing it in terms of these things that we're calling laws of literature. I've discovered all of these laws of literature, iambic pentameter and sentence construction and grammar and all of this stuff. Surely one day these laws of literacy will, will go on to explain the origin of the laws of the literacy or, or the origin of the text itself. Surely that would... Surely that would be where this is going. But of course, I'm making a, a category error if I do that. And is there not a, a fear that we're doing that when we say that science will one day explain the origin of the very thing that science is about? I take confidence from, the, from as I said before, from Darwin's success, because everything that you said about full stops and capital letters at the beginning of the, of the sentence, and I have it, pentameters and things, you could have said that about life, and people did say that about life. And it, we, we notice that living things are remarkably well designed, that birds are beautifully designed to fly and, and fish are beautifully designed to, to swim and, and so on. Um, and the complexity is all there, the, the detail of the... Of, of of the design is is incredibly impressive, 
And it would have seemed absolutely, I mean, I suspect this is why it took so long for Darwin to come on the scene, actually, because it just seemed so obvious that it had to, it had to, uh, had an author sure. uh, but, but behind it. Darwin solved that. There isn't an author. I mean, it's, it's natural selection does the trick. So where is the, where is the analogy with Hamlet or Sherlock Holmes I left? Su- I then? suppose the analogy would be that um, what Darwin did was, was, Close the question on the complexity of life, but he didn't close the question on where life came from, as we've already no, that's agreed. Right. And, and, but, and I, su- I suppose what I'm putting forward is that maybe laws of physics, laws of biology, laws of science are not the kind of thing that can explain the origin of the laws of physics, the origin of the laws of biology, that kind of stuff. Where maybe it's sort of operating on a on a. Well, it could be. I mean, we, we haven't got there yet. But but what, all 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 I said was that that Darwin's success should give us confidence. Mm. Um, and and that there will come a time when we understand the laws of physics. I think we're not far off. I'm not we. I mean, the physicists aren't far off that now. In, in fact, if you liked that clip, then you'll love the full conversation, which you can watch right now by clicking just here. Go on.